Losing a child is one of the most heart-wrenching experiences a parent can face. The bond between the parent and the child is deep and unconditional, and the pain of separation can be unbearable. We lost our first daughter many years ago. It leaves you lost, broken and empty. It is something you never forget. The thought of having to go through this again was too much to bear. I gaze outside the hospital window, trying to escape this world. I see people coming and going, a blue sky decorated with clouds. Some trees that sway in the gentle breeze, they seem to play this game where they dance with the wind. I think to myself, life, what is it? You laugh, you cry, you love, you hate. We all play our part on this big stage we call Earth. The sounds of the hospital ward bring me back to reality. I focus back on the many machines that beep and flash in the ICU ward. I follow a cable that twists and turns, goes under a blanket and reappears near a pillow that leads to my daughter's hand. It is taped securely to her skin, as is the other five or more other tubes that come and go. My daughter lays motionless in an ICU bed, eyes closed, her chest rises and falls ever so slightly. If it was not for the complicated equipment attached to her, I would not be able to tell how she is doing. With Samantha, the only real form of communication is through her beautiful smile and eyes. When Samantha is well, she tells you in her special way. Her eyes light up, her cheeks rise and her funny teeth peep through her lips. But the whole room lights up when she gives you that magic smile. It was only two days ago we were a complete family. My wife looking after Samantha, I was working as was my son. We had our worries, but life was as normal as it can be for us. 19 years doing the same thing day in, day out. 19 years looking after Samantha. It's a selfish world. It stops for no one. I think to myself, how dare the sun keep shining, the breeze keep playing with the trees, and my daughter is in hospital unable to breathe? It does not care. It has no feelings. But then, for a minute or two, it starts to rain, as if the world is crying for my little Samantha. The ICU doctors call my wife and I in a private room again. They tell us things are not looking good. I have been preparing myself for these words for the last 19 years. I knew the time would come when I would have to face this situation again. As the doctor is talking, I start thinking, my daughter's wedding. This is something I'll never experience in my life. I'll never give my daughter away in marriage. I will never have that last father-daughter dance. These are the thoughts that rush through my mind. We go to the hospital chapel and say a prayer and then head back to ICU. I am repeating in my head, Dear Lord, please help my daughter. Please place your hands on Samantha. Please cure her. Repeating this over and over and over again. You go through all these emotions. You laugh, you cry, you get angry and back to pray. She is stable. 
We sleep on the couches in the ICU waiting room for several nights. Again, several discussions with the doctors, we get asked one simple question. When was the last time you went on holidays? My wife and I look at each other. We can't remember. It must be well over 19 years, we guess. They cannot believe it. The doctors cannot believe that we have been giving Samantha 19 years of ICU care. The doctors agree to keep treating Samantha and see what happens in the next couple of days. We are left in this quiet room to think, and then it finally hit me. We are fighting a battle we have no real control over. If a light bulb blows, I can change it. If the car needs a new tire, I can replace it. But I have no control over this. I can't do it alone. And then I pray to God. Dear Lord, I give Samantha to you. Do what you want. She is my daughter, but I give her to you. If you want to heal her, so be it. If you want to take her, so be it. It is your choice. A moment of silence and I feel this calming feeling all over my body. A verse from the Bible comes to mind. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? It's funny how life works. My wife then gets a call from a friend who lost their child. She tells Samira, just leave it to God. Tell Samantha if she is tired of this world, she can go. Love her, but let her and the dear Lord work it out. And that is exactly what we did. The next day, we head into ICU and find Samantha is awake. She is tired, but when she sees us, she gives us that magic smile. Hours pass and she starts to become more responsive. I now have time to reflect on what happened. Did we just experience the power of God? Did I get the miracle I prayed for? Or was it the doctors and hospitals doing? To me, I strongly believe that I have experienced a miracle. Sure, the doctors and nurses played a big part, but they are limited in what they can do. And that is when God steps in. When you've reached your limits, when you can do no more, when you are down, broken, and reached the end, that is when God comes in. I believe it was the moment when we gave Samantha to him and said, Lord, it is up to you. This is when things changed. I believe the dear Lord helped us through prayer and by leaving it up to Him. Some people think a miracle is going to be this big clap of thunder followed by trumpet sounding, but no, miracles happen in small steps. God does not talk to you direct, He communicates through people. People are God's language. They are the friends, the doctors, the nursing staff, which are all part of God's plan. God is here. He listens. He does work in mysterious ways. It may not be clear at first, but it makes sense in the end. Pray to God. I have been blessed. I have been touched by the love of God. And I no longer have to wait for my miracle.